Hello, it's Mr. Ryman here, and I'm going to read for you an article called Blood, Smoke, and Freedom. This is a true story from the American Revolution, and it's written by Karen, or Lauren, I'm sorry, Tarshish. It comes from the StoryWorks Junior magazine. Uh, this was the March-April, I believe, of 2018. Here's a story about Joseph Plum Martin. He was still a boy when he became an American soldier. Would he survive his first battle? And you should think and, uh, as you read, look for evidence, which is examples and details that the author includes to support her description of events. And this, I presume, is Joseph looking on and seeing this battle with guns and cannons and fire. Joseph watched as his fellow fighters take on a group of British soldiers known as Redcoats because of their bright red uniforms. Boom, boom, boom. Explosions shook the ground. Smoke filled the air. 15-year-old Joseph Plum Martin was lying in the dirt, trying to stay alive. It was August 27, 1776. America and England were fighting the first big battle of the Revolutionary War in New York. Joseph had begged his family to let him join the American army. He thought being a soldier would be exciting and he was sure America would win. But now, Joseph knew that the Americans were doomed. Hundreds of soldiers were dead. The cries of injured men rose up into the sky. This sounds horrific. It seemed Joseph had two choices, surrender or die. How about those choices? That would be awful. How was being a soldier different from what, sold, from what Joseph expected? That's the pause and think right here. And that's a really good question to consider as we read on and think about what we've already heard and read. A new world. Joseph was born in 1760. The United States wasn't a country yet. America was still mostly wilderness, except for a strip of land along the east coast. This land was ruled by England. It was divided into 13 colon areas or colonies. Joseph lived in the colony of Connecticut. Hundreds of thousands of people had come to the colonies from England and other parts of Europe. Rules were too strict there. People had few choices about their religion, their jobs, or even their friends and Friends, in the colonies, people had more choices, but they still had to follow England's rules. Not everyone in the colonies had a good life. Hundreds of thousands of Native American people were killed. They died of diseases brought by Europeans. They died in fights over land. They starved after being kicked out of their homelands. During this time, African people were dragged to America in chains. They were forced to become slaves. Meanwhile, Americans had become angry at England. They said it wasn't fair that they had to follow England's rules. America's anger toward England smoldered like a fire. And then in April 1775, that anger exploded into war. The American Revolution had begun. I love the word smoldered. And these bold words are vocabulary words, and you can see them in yellow with um, definitions. Here, it's a good idea to pause and think, why did people leave England and other countries to come to the colonies? And here is an image of the colonies right here with names attached to them. And you can see a lot of the land in North America wasn't uh, considered um, the uh, England owned land that's being fought over only these areas right here and then there's a close-up or like a zoom in of where the battle took place the Battle of Brooklyn getting ready to fight at first the thought of fighting scared Joseph but his courage grew soon he wanted to join the new American army in June 1776 his family said yes Joseph sailed to New York City this big, bustling city had been turned into an Ar American army camp. I was now what I had long wished to be, he later wrote, a soldier. 
But Joseph wasn't really a soldier yet, and neither were most of the nearly 20,000 men and teenagers in the American army. They were just regular people like Joseph. Some could barely some could barely fire a gun. Their leader, General George Washington, had never led an army before. All summer he struggled to turn this group into strong fighters. Joseph didn't complain about shooting practice or endless marching. He choked down the army meals, such as wormy biscuits and flavorless meat. He coped with the summer heat and the stink of garbage and human waste. Still, he was excited to be a soldier. Let's pause and think again. What did Joseph and others need to learn to become soldiers? In order to become soldiers, what did they still have to learn? Uh-oh, surprise attack. Meanwhile, the British planned a huge attack on New York. They'd sailed ships packed with weapons. Joseph could see the soldiers on those ships. They were waiting like caged beasts. They were hungry for blood and ready to strike. They Notice how the author paints the British um, like caged beasts. In other words, like um, da dangerous men getting ready to, to jump into New York City and take over. Powerful, powerful animals. They struck early one morning at the end of August. While it was still dark, more than 15,000 British soldiers arrived on the shores of Brooklyn. Brooklyn was a village across the river from New York City. There were a few thousand American soldiers there. They were all caught by surprise. Washington rushed to send more men to Brooklyn. Joseph was one of them. He saw a scene of horror. Men were lying in the grass, some with broken arms, some with broken legs, some with broken heads, Joseph wrote. He and other soldiers tried to stop the British from reaching American forts, but the British forces were too powerful. Hundreds of American soldiers were killed or injured. And we'll pause one more time here. What did Washington do when the British attacked Brooklyn? So we're experiencing some cause and effect, right? Um, there was a surprise attack. So George Washington, what? And I'll pause one more time to look at this. This says the two Georges. These leaders were enemies, but they were similar. Both men were popular and cared about their countries. Both were farmers, and both were more than six feet tall, in a time when most men were, so, were much shorter. You've got U.S. General George Washington, and then you have King George III of England. It says both were farmers. I find that hard to believe. I, I'd, have to, I'd have, like to research more about King George of England. If you had lived in 1776, what would it be like? Life was different back in George, Joseph's day. Here are just a few reasons why. Kids loved eel pie. I've actually tasted fried eel, fried eel, and it really is very yummy. And you hear this about lots of different things. It does taste like chicken, believe it or not. Ew, these slimy water snakes baked in a pie were an American favorite. Schools were just one room. A single teacher taught children of all ages together, and we know all about the one-room schoolhouse. New shoes were really painful. Shoes were expensive and hard to get. There were no there were no left or right shoes, and it took months to break in a new pair. There was no toilet paper. People used corn cobs to clean themselves. Ouch! Well, that was not nice. <laughs> all right, secret escape. Even with all the blood and fear, George, General George Washington stayed calm. Then he came up with a brilliant plan. He would sneak the American army out of Brooklyn during the night. He sent an urgent message. We need boats in Brooklyn now. Because it was dark and foggy, thousands of soldiers were able to sneak back to New York City. This included Joseph. In the morning, the British attacked the forts. They were shocked to find them empty. The Americans still lost the Battle of Brooklyn, but their army had survived, and they would keep fighting. The American Revolution lasted for eight years. Towns were burned down, thousands of soldiers were killed, many of Americans fell afraid all the time. But in 1783, the war finally ended. 
The British surrendered. America had won the war. Joseph fought during the entire war. He later moved to Maine, married, and raised five children. He died at age 89. He always remembered the terrors of war, but he was also proud that he had helped America win its fight for freedom. How long did the American Revolution last? Who won? Those are kind of easy questions. Um, and here's a think and write. Pretend you're Joseph in 1776. Write a journal entry explaining how hard it is to be an American soldier. Include at least five details from the story. Send it to war contest. Um, okay, so this has expired because this magazine is a couple years old. But uh, I like this idea. You could pretend it's a diary entry. You could put the date, pretend you're Joseph, and write as if you are experiencing the, this war. Now, this is the thing. You shouldn't, don't embellish, which means to put in extra information that didn't necessarily happen. Use only evidence from the text. So you need to reread this text and find information. You could talk about this if you had lived in 1776. Um, you could uh, talk about what um, Joseph would have seen or, or experienced with the um, the British and remember the, the caged beasts. You could talk about that kind of thing. So don't make up anything. Just use things that are in the text. Okay? Good luck. I look forward to reading your writing.